Hey everyone, Ryan here with Fluorescent, and today I'd like to welcome you to a continuation of our introductory guide for optimizing images for your Shopify store. In our previous video, we touched on many of the important facets of image management, such as file type, size, composition, and general best practices, like avoiding the use of baked in text to prevent cropping, just to name a few. But today, we're going to zoom in on a couple specific workflows intended to address some of the common pain points merchants tend to encounter when it comes to images and their interplay with Shopify themes. These will include topics such as how to identify the cause of the white bounding box around your logos and favicons, and how to remove them with the use of file formats that support transparency. And we'll also touch on how to uniformly manage images that you want to reside within a grid, but, you know, harmoniously and without warping or distorting them, by optimizing their initial size, aspect ratio, and quality through the practice of selective cropping. We'll also cover the benefits and limitations of theme editor related image management such as adapt image and aspect ratio settings that come standard with certain Shopify themes. But before we jump in, I've included a link to part 1 in the description below. This video may contain some additional context that will clarify some of what we're discussing today, so feel free to check it out and come on back to see us for the hands-on image optimization hoedown. So, first off, logos. Not all logos come in the same box, right? Some are round, some are text-based, and some are just outright oddly shaped. We love that about them, as they are most literally the mark of your brand's unique identity and should therefore speak true to themselves, as designed. That said, all logos, and all images for that matter, do arrive in a similar box, and this is called a bounding box. What is a bounding box, you ask? A bounding box is the representation of the allotted space around a given image object, and in the context of web design, serves as a reference point so that it can be managed within a layout, most often according to a grid, and therefore avoiding any instances of other objects colliding with it. For square or rectangular images, this could literally be the size of the image itself, thus rendering it a bit moot. But for objects within an image that are not square or rectangular, such as Fluorescent's gorgeous logo for example, the bounding box is this area surrounding the object, and can be seen either cinched in tight or quite wide around. Why is this important? Well, since the bounding box is going to exist no matter what, the big difference is whether or not it's visible and how much breathing room it contains. All of this comes down to how your image is created, and which file format you use to upload it to your Shopify admin. You can see in this example, we have a couple versions of the logo, initially saved as a PNG, which is a file format that supports transparent backgrounds, as does the WebP file format. JPEGs, however, do not, and so in the instance where you have a non-rectangular object sitting in a rectangular bounding box, saving this as a JPEG is going to show the bounding box as opaque white by default, or any other background color you put behind the object. This is important because if you save the logo as a JPEG and then upload it to a header that isn't distinctly the same color as the bounding box, it's going to show up. And in our humble opinion, things could definitely look better. So what we're looking for is to provide an image that has a transparent background represented by this checkered backdrop in Photoshop and a relatively tight bounding box, saved as a .png, SVG, or optimally WebP. You can see the difference in file size between the same logo saved in both PNG and WebP formats. According to Google, WebP images are roughly 26% smaller in size compared to PNGs on average. This way, when we upload the image to the header in place of the JPEG, the background is transparent, allowing the color of your background to show through. Now doesn't this look much more professional? With a lot of modern themes, Cornerstone included, there's also the option for a secondary logo, which allows for animated transitions to take effect, lending even more oomph to your storefront. Check it out in action! Now, depending on how your logo was created, you may have some work ahead of you masking out the background if you started out with a JPEG, but we recommend if you're building a logo from scratch, or if you've hired someone to do so, that you specifically start a file setup with a transparent background and with as high a quality as possible, essentially an SVG or other vector supporting file provided it's from a trusted source, that can then be uploaded directly to Shopify in the case of an SVG, or converted to a raster supporting file type like a PNG or WebP. Now, let's move on to grids and the images that live within them. A lot of modern themes have adapt image or image aspect ratio settings that allow you to wrangle images of varying aspect ratios so they adhere to one common ratio. This ensures that the grid is uniform and not disjointed in the case where all of these neighboring images are left to their own devices. This is usually very effective in instances where the grid is asymmetrical in nature, but for symmetrical grids, while this does the job of fitting all the images into the same sized frame, it usually adopts a one-size-fits-all treatment for all of the images in the grid, and depending on their initial dimensions, may cause for some indiscriminate cropping. If this doesn't bother you, then you're off to the races, but if you're detail-oriented to a fault, like <clears throat> yours truly, then there is a pretty straightforward manual workflow we can show you that allows you to crank out images of the same dimension and relative file size while still maintaining control of the crop selection for each image, right down to the pixel. For this workflow, you'll want to open an image editor file, I'm using Photoshop, and create a file with a 1 to 1 or square aspect ratio. I'm choosing 1024 by 1024 pixels, which is a large image but not massive like a retina image at 2048 by 2048 pixels. 
In any case, just make sure your file is no smaller than 800 by 800 pixels, as images smaller than this will become pixelated if you zoom in on them. As this is for web and not print, you'll want to reduce the resolution from 300 ppi to 72 ppi, ppi meaning pixels per inch. This is also where you would have the opportunity to set up a transparent background during the creation of your new file. Wink wink. Once your file is open, you can start placing your images of choice on their own layers, resizing the images without distorting them so they fit within the window with your desired crop selection in mind. Once all the images are placed, you can turn them on one layer at a time and export them as PNGs or of course WebP. Once you have your images, you can review them and upload them to a grid section with an adapt aspect ratio setting in your theme to test them out. You can see that once these images have been uploaded, they maintain the exact same crop selection and aspect ratio as they had within our Photoshop file. Amazing, right? And it didn't even take that much time to do. With some practice, you can create these little workflows yourself and ensure that your images are being uploaded with as close to uniform size and quality as possible. And there you have it. Image Optimization Part 2 If you want to know more about the topic of image optimization, please check out our Image Guide Companion Doc in our Help Center that peels back the layers and delves deeper into how to get the most out of your images for each specific use case, some theme-specific tips, and of course, much, much more. As always, thanks for checking out our videos. I've dropped a link to Fluorescence user guides for these features in the description below, and please don't hesitate to reach out to our amazing support team if you could use a hand or some advice on how to use them to their full potential. They're happy to assist. Until next time.